Come and join our free webinar on the 28th of August at 8.30 p.m. BST. We're going to be looking at capacity and why it is like the canary in the mine shafts that was used to see if the way ahead was safe. Capacity is like an early warning sign of whether the direction we're headed is clear and healthy or confused and toxic. It's the indicator not just of the resources available, but of exactly what those resources are being used for. It's such a cool, great, enormous topic. We've got a whole month looking at this in September as part of the expansion membership course. And to begin with, there's our free for all, everyone invited webinar, which I hope you'll come to 28th of August, 8.30 p.m. BST. See the podcast notes for the sign up link or my website, clairediamond.com, and hopefully see you there. This is the Superpowered Mind podcast for inquiring individuals who are tired of the struggle for peace, happiness, and clarity. I'm Claire Diamond, ready to help you explore the principles of the mind, the self, and reality to unlock ultimate mental freedom. This podcast is the one to listen to if you're ready to experience the capabilities of the superpowered mind. Hi, everybody. Welcome to episode 27. Today, we're looking at why capacity is the foundation of all experience of being. And we are doing a course on capacity in September. It's our next live course as part of the membership. And I thought we'd use today to start to explore that topic as a, by way of an introduction. The other day I saw a car sticker that said, you only get one life, live it. And it was an interesting reflection because what does it mean? What does that really mean to live that one life, this one experience in this form, this exact form of of this body. And I think this is where capacity comes in because life is happening anyway. Life life is happening in this form of the body. Um, There is nothing the mind can do that is preventing that as an as an ongoing happening and yet there is a difference in how that beingness is experienced because from the belief system that what I believe I am I am and how I believe the world is is how the world is and stress, tension, feelings of being threatened, emotions of shame and insecurity, fear and need are to be taken at face value and are indications that life needs to shrink, that we need to pull up the drawbridge, protect ourselves, go into conflict or withdrawal, that belief system means that life is lived as an ongoing attempt to secure that sense of being, to secure the sense of ourselves as a separate entity that is everything the mind and thoughts and beliefs say it is. Whereas if we consider something completely different, that life, ongoing experience of being, every moment, every interaction, every conversation, every relationship is reflecting back to that mind what is currently being believed, what delusions are underway, what um, traumas from the past are playing out, what protections are in place that actually have nothing to do with current reality. When life is seen from that perspective, then instead of the experience of being, being an ongoing contraction and protection, life starts to become an ongoing space of expansion. And this is what capacity is, really, because capacity, when 
misunderstood is really a mode or a method for protecting the ego identity. So for example, if the identity is associated with being someone who is good at work, who you know can take on everything, who doesn't complain, who gets everything done, and that identity really has this feeling of survival in it. If I, if I fail in work, what am I? If people think badly of me in work, what, where do I exist? You know, the, the shame of that would be so insurmountable. I, couldn't, I can't even imagine surviving it. From that perspective, capacity can be enormous can't it? We can take on more and more and more and more. And the motivation to do so is through the roof because it's a survival motivation. The, the, the sense of myself as being of value, of having any purpose, of mattering or of even existing depends on that motivation. And it's a, it's a platform of you know, where people might really marvel at how much we get done. And, and the more they marvel, the more, the more we feel like we are affirmed in that separate identity. But the place from which it's coming is a, is a bottomless pit. We will never do enough. We will never have enough praise. We'll never have enough promotions that will eventually stabilize that sense of self. And in fact, the, from a foundation that relies on these affirmations coming in to feel of value, each affirmation is really maintaining the sense of lack because we, it lasts momentarily. It's like a drug, a hit of a drug. Momentarily, we feel good, worthy, valuable, and then immediately run to the next thing. Someone says something, someone questions our ability, and, and we're plunged back down on the roller coaster again. So there might be enormous capacity. And we see this in, in so many areas. We, you know, we see this in, in health, the you know, capacity to exercise, say, coming from the perspective of my value depends on my, str- my physical strength or my endurance or, or how, how thin I am. The, the capacity can be enormous. The, the, the rigors that the human mind can inflict on the body in the attempt to stabilize the ego have, have no limit, really. In every area, and I, I was reading recently about people in dysfunctional relationships, that the, the capacity to put up with bad behavior from someone or to override or or to remain calm even in in the face of of abuse, which can be seen as or felt inwardly as, you know, aren't I aren't I great? You know, I I really understand this person, it's it's fine. But actually that capacity which is out of alignment of that person's own desires, their own wishes, is just generating dysfunction. And, and, and we know that when, they're, and when we see the resentment that is building up, resentment building up in different relationships because the person is, is, you know, is showing how much capacity they have, how willing they are, how, how much hard work they, they'll put in, how little recognition they need is um, it's, it's building up a, a burnout, an, an emotional burnout. And so it's really interesting for us all, especially in a spiritual conversation where, where capacity can really be hijacked and can turn into something that is, is unquestionably good but actually underneath is dysfunctional. It's very interesting for us to see 
how capacity expands emotionally, physically, intellectually, professionally, in in relationships, how it can expand from a an ongoing deepening of sanity, healing, alignment, truth, integrity, accountability. Because without that look, without that sense check, when capacity is just taken on the surface as a good thing, it can lead to burnout for the individual, exhaustion, and actually when the the capacity is for is for leadership for persuasion of other people for for generating followers for very persuasive discourse capacity as as a as a quality as a leadership quality can create real harm within a society you know i think i always think it's so interesting these all the books about how to be a tremendous leader, how to gain influence and power and and followers, how to persuade people. And none of them <laughs> are looking at, at, at the origin of that motivation, of, of really how without the sense check of integrity and of what the what resistance, what resistance, resentment, fear, need, shame, insecurity, anger, hatred, opposition is saying back into the system what it's informing. Without that step, capacity to take on more work, to, to take on more power, more leadership, more influence, to expand as a um, representative of, of an ideal or a stand is is profoundly dangerous for for society. We we need the check. We need that that reflection that is at the heart of of true capacity, true alignment, true integrity. That says, how is this world? a reflection of the belief system that is in operation right now? How is the idea of self, so the ego, the identity, how is, how is that identity that's being affirmed in this moment the same? It's made of the same conditioning. It's made of the same belief system as everything about the way the world appears and so that belief system that that perception from moment to moment is generating how reality appears right now and and that ongoing check back in which is the only true integrity check and it's so powerful it really says all change starts within us. That's the origin. And everything externally is a reflection of that foundation. From that space, which is a space of truth and presence of love, intelligence in action, capacity is an impersonal resource that opens up more opportunities, more depth, a louder voice, a greater visibility, as well as more more and more ability to recognize the role of dissent, to recognize information that is coming in that is informing that process of expansion and that's what we're really interested in 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 this topic is that creation that leads to learning leads to feedback and learning from that feedback that then informs the creative system 
And when that process is happening in the right way, capacity increases. And it's increasing in relation to how much separation is dissolving and how impersonal all creation and learning is becoming so obvious. So it's an amazing topic, capacity. I think it's something that all of us can really look at, can deeply, profoundly explore, because it sets up a foundation for all interaction with the world, all conversation, all creation, as an understanding really of of what that process is and of how limitation and lack that keeps expression small and contained and, and not risking anything, as well as a sort of powerful movement out into the world that is coming from a conviction that somehow through this, I am going to secure myself. I am finally going to find peace through this powerful influence that I have. Both of those are showing how a confusion of what we are and of what the world is ultimately leads to a a life that is either very restrictive or very confused or both. So in conclusion, capacity is an ongoing dynamic spaciousness. It's the ability to understand what every moment of stress is saying, what every moment of resentment or resistance is saying, what every moment of rejection or indifference or contradiction is saying, because all of it is information back into the system that challenges, profoundly challenges the idea of separation, really makes it clear that there is no individual decider or doer. And through that process, as learning and creation become more obviously impersonal, the whole system starts to align to that the perfection of the design, really, which is every moment is a invitation to healing, to truth, to sanity, to creation, to expansion, And that's what capacity is. Capacity is the recognition of that design and how it works. And from that space, all doing starts to become a re-energizing process. There's nothing being protected in it. If there is something being protected in it, it's revealed. It's shown for what it is. And so... Each act of creation, each act of expression, or every, every interaction, every conversation is a revelation of the capacity that is here already. And yeah, I mean, as, I, as I'm preparing this course for September, it's becoming clear that it, this is really the foundation of our experience from moment to moment, whether as a contracted protected, vulnerable, insecure sense of separate self that has to be defended from a, from a world that would make it more vulnerable to a ongoing process, a perfect design in which the capacity to really experience every moment for what it is, which to go back to that bumper sticker, is is living life. That's what's available. And um, yeah, it's, it's the foundation of being. It's, um, it changes from moment to moment and, and to start to see it in action is, is really fascinating for us. So thank you, lots of love, bye. Thank you for listening to Superpowered Mind with me, Claire Diamond. 
If you want extra support in the exploration of your mind, download our exclusive subliminal recording, especially for podcast listeners, on bit.ly slash podcast subliminal.